Hey guys, what's up? Behind me, I have two insanely powerful gaming PCs. Each PC is running a dual GPU setup and a pretty powerful uh, multi-core CPU. The only main difference between these two PCs is that this one is running two AMD graphics cards, while this one is running two NVIDIA graphics cards. Now, specifically speaking, this is running a Crossfire setup with dual Vega 64 liquid-cooled editions. This one is running a SLI setup with two NVIDIA 1080 Ti's. So, in this video, I want to test the performance of, from to my knowledge, AMD's most powerful Crossfire cards, the Vega 64 Liquid Cooled Editions, because these are the last cards that officially support Crossfire on the AMD platform. The Radeon 7s do support multi-GPU with DirectX 12, but almost no games support that at, at this time, and I don't have two Radeon 7s. So, but these are the last AMD graphics cards with explicit Crossfire support. As for the 1080 Ti's, now they're not the most powerful NVIDIA cards I could find, but they're the most powerful that I have uh, in a set of two. So I do have two 1080 Ti's, now they are different 1080 Ti's, but they are two of the best and rarest 1080 Ti's that you can possibly find. That is the 1080 Ti Poseidon from Asus, and the 1080 Ti Aorus uh, AIO Liquid Cooled Edition. I don't know the name and I don't feel like looking it up. Uh, basically, they each run a boost clock of 2 GHz. Now, I know what you're thinking if you're smart. The 1080 Ti's are definitely better than the Vega 64 Liquid Cooled Editions. Yes, they are. But, I tried to overclock these Vega 64 Liquid Cooled Editions to 2 GHz each to rival these 2 GHz 1080 Ti's. These technically do have more compute cores in them than these do, but it didn't work and I almost fried my system, so uh, we're running everything at stock. The only thing I really want to test though is, yeah, we might get higher FPS on the NVIDIA system, but which setup, Crossfire or SLI, runs more stable, runs better, and yes, which one runs higher FPS? Which system gets a higher FPS or performs better in games isn't entirely just about which has two more powerful graphics cards. Because everyone knows the 1080 Ti is slightly more powerful than the Vega 64 Liquid Gold Edition. But it really comes down to how well these games scale on Crossfire versus SLI. Now, scaling means that the game effectively is able to split up the workload between the two graphics cards. If a game has better support for Crossfire, then it may run better on these Vega 64 Liquid Cool Editions than on these uh, 1080 Ti's, and vice versa. Now, some games actually support SLI, but don't support Crossfire, and vice versa as well. The one game that I have that I know does this is that Hitman 2 has explicit support for SLI, but sometimes doesn't work with Crossfire. It depends. Uh, some people have gotten it working with Crossfire, some people haven't, but basically they're just sweeping it under the rug as it supports it. It doesn't really. Now, before we get into the games, let's talk about setup. Usually people say, AMD has terrible drivers, and they do. This was hell to set up. Now, if you don't know, Crossfire can be run on almost any motherboard as long as it has two slots that can fit identical AMD graphics cards. It could even be running on an X4 slot and an X16 slot as long as, again, there's two cards that are identical in the system. Some boards may not work at all, but really it's, it's pretty universal as for what it'll work on. Crossfire, unlike SLI, doesn't use any bridging between the two graphics cards except for the PCI Express bus, meaning that all you need to basically connect the cards is, you know, drivers and the motherboard itself. Now, I spent about six hours trying to get this system to work effectively. Crossfire basically enabled almost immediately, but I had to download a couple of drivers and that Radeon software and enable it manually, restart the system 14 times, but it just wasn't working in most of the games. So I basically sitting there restarting the PC a thousand times, one of the cards shut off, trying to do a little overclocking, and basically came out 
about two, six hours of wasted time as I ended up back at stock settings with base, you know, support and I had to just pick a new game set because the games I wanted to run just didn't support Crossfire in the way I wanted them to. So we ended up with this system, which is an i7-9800X, a pretty high-end Intel CPU that'll definitely be able to run the power of these two cards asterisks, uh, 64 gigs of DDR4, and uh, yeah, and of course our games are on an NVMe SSD on both systems to take out any bottlenecks in that way, although you'll see with the testing settings we're using that the bottleneck will always be to the best of my ability, the graphics cards. Now, now AMD may have terrible drivers and may have been terrible to set up, but NVIDIA is not out of the woods yet. You may think that as long as you have two 16x slots on your motherboard and one of these fancy smanchy high bandwidth SLI bridges that you can just plug in your NVIDIA graphics cards that are uh, GPU wise identical and you'll be fine. Uh, well, you'd be wrong because NVIDIA, instead of just allowing it to be easy for you, uh, decides that no, that's not how it's going to work. See, a lot of motherboards straight up do not support SLI despite having the hardware specs to handle it. Why is that? Well, because to support SLI, a motherboard manufacturer actually has to pay NVIDIA money to get this fancy little NVIDIA SLI sticker or whatever badge, I don't know. Basically, to support SLI, they have to pay NVIDIA. And some motherboard manufacturers just don't. They don't want to do it, so some boards won't support it. So I had to use a very expensive Asus ROG Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard to get SLI working. But even when I had it installed and high bandwidth bridge and everything ready to go, it supports SLI, it's got the badge. It didn't work because unlike Crossfire, NVIDIA SLI will not work unless the GPUs have at least eight PCIe lanes each. So you cannot run on an 8X and a 4X or a 16X and a 4X. You must run them both on either 8X each or 16X and 8X speeds, which I thought, okay, I'll put them each in a 16X slot and the motherboard will divide that 8X, 8X. Wrong. The motherboard divided it as 8X, 4X. And why is that? It's because I had a PCIe 4X M.2 NVMe SSD installed in the top M.2 slot on my motherboard. And the top M.2 slot on my motherboard is technically connected to the CPU's PCIe lanes, and four of those lanes were going to that, so it didn't have enough lanes for the graphics cards. It was stupid, so I had to disable the top slot, put my NVMe SSD in the bottom slot, which connected to the chipset instead, and all in all, it ended up being stupid, and I had to take out both my graphics cards to get the NVMe SSD out, because it's in the motherboard and it's behind the SSD. I don't even care, it's stupid. This is the point. So after all that setup, I finally got my setups done. They're ready to go. So here's how we tested. All these games were tested on the same settings at 1440p. Now I'm usually completely against testing games and uploading to YouTube games tested on graphics cards at 1440p because 1440p is not as common as 1080p. Most people are still gaming at 1080p, so they'll want to know how their card performs at the resolution they're likely to be playing at 1080p. But I had to test at 1440p and actually probably could or should have tested at 4K resolution because to my knowledge, there is currently not a single CPU that exists that can deliver enough frames to the graphics cards to not be a bottleneck. According to my calculations that I totally didn't do and don't know how to math, you would have to run a CPU at over 7 gigahertz to handle the power of these cards at 1080p to make them the bottleneck. So instead, I had to test at a higher resolution at maximum settings. Every game is tested at 1440p maximum settings. That is MXAA turned up, FXAA turned up, all that stuff, anti-aliasing, 16x, maximum settings to even make the graphics cards close or maximum at the top of being a bottleneck. If not, the CPU would hold back the cards and the testing wouldn't be right. So I had to do 1440p. Thankfully, I do have a 1440p monitor over there at 144 hertz. So we were able to proceed. And that's really it. Without further ado, let's get into the games and talk about the performance. 
Alright, so hopping into our first game is what is considered now to be kind of the gold standard for both Crossfire and SLI, and that is Grand Theft Auto 5. On the left, you can see the Vega 64 Crossfire uh, MSI Afterburner overlay, and on the right, we have the NVIDIA 1080 Ti's. Uh, you can see they're color-coded. Now, I've split the screen a little bit, kind of more towards uh, the, uh, the NVIDIA side. Uh, and that's because it just kind of shows a better split and at least we have both numbers on the screen and for this game It just looks a little better to have it split there. This is the point um, You can see both gameplays and you can see on the left is kind of some flickering on the crossfire side and That happens in this game in one of the game we test. I don't even know why it's just a crossfire glitch on the SLI side We're fine, but uh, crossfire is just having some issues here with some flickering and some parts of the map have weird lighting But that's really it. So both these are on 1440p at literally maximum settings the only I didn't tr touch is those extra graphic settings those advanced graphic settings that basically destroy your game anytime you use them and uh, You know both games did fine for 1440p max settings This is pretty good FPS you can see we had a, a pretty high utilization on both sides getting almost to 100% on the Nvidia side on the right um but, um, it's clear that the NVIDIA card wins here. The 1080 Ti's do perform a little better, but honestly, the Vega 64's do fine, except for this little stuttering glitch, but uh, that's really it. Let's watch the rest of this gameplay and then get to our next game. Moving on to our next game is a bit of an old one, but I had to do this one for a certain reason. This is Hitman Absolution, one of my all-time favorite games. Um, I split the screen a little differently, where I basically am just showing the SLI gameplay, because just the recording looked a little nicer. The game on both sides was completely smooth and played amazingly, but I just felt that the video side looked a little better. But I do have the AMD numbers on the top left, uh, doing about the same run on this is the gun range level of the game. It's considered one of the hardest levels, because every single character in the game has a weapon and uh, tries to kill you as soon as you shoot anyone so I did this level uh, going loud and uh, basically uh, this is ultra maximum settings which is again really crazy to me at 1440p and both sides did really good and video still comes out a little bit higher with those average FPS but honestly both sides were completely smooth and I barely even noticed the difference and at some points even the Vega 64s had a higher FPS but uh, let's just watch this gameplay because it's just so good and uh, I'll be right back with the last game Alright guys, so the final game was Far Cry 5, and Far Cry 5 was a weird one, because first of all, it had that flickering effect uh, on the AMD side, which again is just like a crossfire glitch, I have no idea why, uh, who knows, but um, 
it actually ran better FPS wise on the crossfire side we saw 10 to 20 FPS higher doing around about the same exact run of just jumping through the forest at max FOV now I did max settings 1440p but I had to turn off HD textures on the AMD side and I also did it on the Nvidia side I didn't have to but I did because when I turned on HD textures on the AMD side, we actually ran out of VRAM. We were using all 8 gigabytes of that HBM2 memory. While the 1080 Ti has 11 gigs of GDDR5X, the Vega 64 only has 8 gigs of VRAM, which normally is fine, but under max load 1440p, it was not having that HD textures. And without HD textures, though, the cards were not under full load, so the CPU was the bottleneck. So I actually had to turn on double resolution scale. So I had to turn up the resolution scale in game to double to make sure the cards were the bottleneck on each side. And for some reason, the AMD cards actually ran better. But that's really it for this video, guys. I know it's kind of disappointing that I only ran three games. I had planned on doing more, you know, Hitman 2 and some other games, you know, hopefully Red Dead. But you know, none of these games support Crossfire fully or SLI. Um, you know, Hitman 2 would have been nice because the game looks a little better. But that is why I had to do Hitman Absolution. And, you know, <laughs> normally people test games like uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and all that. I just don't have the games. They cost money and I don't have them. So three games that support SLI and Crossfire are the only ones I had. But it kind of gives a good look at, you know, the, what people call these are dead technologies, although uh, GTA is supposed to be a dead game and they keep reviving it every two goddamn seconds, so I think we can revive SLI and Crossfire just a little bit longer to play some games, and with DirectX 12 multi-GPU support, hopefully multiple GPUs will become uh, more common now and maybe some more support will be added. It's up to game developers to add it, though. This is the point. I, I love Crossfire. I love all this stuff. I want to do more videos about multi-GPU in the future. I think it's just so interesting to have two graphics cards working together to render one singular game and display it on one display this has a point hope you guys kind of enjoyed this video i put a lot of work into it and it you know it ended up looking okay i'm kind of disappointed with the quality a little bit because i'm terrible at making videos but that's not a point if you guys liked the video please leave a like if you dislike the video please leave a like because it's really the same process and it doesn't matter like yo so what it gets added to your like videos but at least i get a like thank you guys so much for watching i love you guys and i'll see you in the next one peace